Please be seated. The record will show the presence of the jury, the defendant, and all counsel. You may continue with cross-examination. Ma'am, with regard to the killing on June 4th of 2008, it was you that committed that murder, that, that killed Travis Alexander, correct? Yes. Nobody else was involved, right? That's correct. And in terms of the, we don't need any finger, any more than the fingerprint evidence that we have. You're, you're not disputing that the fingerprint evidence indicates that you were there, right? That's right. Same thing with the DNA evidence. It was you that was there, right? Yes. Ma'am, after this shot rang out, you said that uh, you went into a fog, right? Um, yes, I began to go. Things get foggy after that point. So, with regard to the camera, can you tell us what happened to the camera? I don't remember what I did with the camera. You acknowledge, though, that the immediately prior to the, what you describe as the killing, the camera was right here in this area next to the tub, correct? Um, that's the last place I saw it rolling. I don't know if it got kicked around or what, I don't know. But you acknowledge, though, that, take a look at uh, exhibit 162, First, let's look at the date and time. You acknowledge that this says, or was taken on June 4th, 2008, at 532.16, correct? Yes. What time was your understanding that the roommates got home? I didn't know. So, you did, they... You don't, did you even know if they were there? Um, I don't remember if they were there or not at that time. Well, do you remember that uh, one of the things that you told us on direct examination was that when there were roommates, the two of you had to be careful in your sexual um, trysts so that as not to, um, not awaken, but let the others know what was going on. Do you remember telling us that? That's correct. So if this was going on on that day, it would be fair to say, based on what you believe, that they were not home, right? This part of the day? Yes, this part. No, I don't think that would have made a difference. What I'm saying, though, is during when this happened, you believe that there were no roommates there, correct? I don't know what time they got home. I don't know. And you are wearing socks, right? Yes. And there is what appears to be a zipper on that foot, correct? Yes. If we look at this further, to orient ourselves, this is Mr. Alexander's head, correct? Yes. Ble blood right there, right? Yes. And that's his foot, correct? Yes. And given the way that the lights are in this particular photograph, the bathroom is in this direction, correct? Yes. And you would agree with me that if the camera, in exhibit 249, was last seen here. Do you see that? Yes. And things happen the way you say they happen. And we now have this photograph that you were the one that moved that camera, right? Um, it could have been us both. I don't know. remember moving it. Well, based on what you tell us, there's this gunshot that rings out, right? Yes. And then you don't remember anything, right? I didn't say that. I said it got foggy after that point. The point oh. where I can't remember anything is after he said, after he threatened my life. What's that? After he threatened my life. Well, what is it that he said? Fucking kill you, bitch. So after that, after fucking kill you, bitch, you don't remember anything else, right? No. Not but, except the one thing that I described. Right. But you do remember, though, that as you ran down this hallway, you were not carrying the camera with you, right? Um, 
No, not the first time I ran no, down the hallway. No, of course not. You were concerned for your life, you told us, right? Yes. And you told us that the camera landed next to the tub, right? Yes. And so if this photograph was snapped at the time that we've agreed that it's snapped, and the camera, the last time you see it, is next to the tub, and then you describe what happens, that Mr. Alexander is down next to the tub, then it was you that moved that camera, right? Sustained. With regard to Mr. Alexander, ma'am, the last memory that you have of him is that he was down on the ground, correct? Um, yes. And the last memory that you have of him is after you shot him, right? Yes. You never saw him walking around, did you? No, I didn't. And so if you didn't, assuming he didn't get up and walk around, and assuming you did shoot him, and assuming that the camera is where you told us that it was, then this camera, to take this photograph, had to be moved, right? Um, yeah, it, yeah, it had to be moved. And you would acknowledge that you did the moving, right? Objection. She said over and over again she doesn't remember. Overruled, you may answer. Only under that theory, that would be right. Well, you see him right there, ma'am? Mr. Alexander? Yes. No, take a look at it. I've you, already you, seen it. All right. Are you saying that in the condition that Mr. Alexander is in exhibit number 162, and you were there, it's your opinion that he, in that condition, could move the camera? I'm not saying that. So you did move the camera, right? Again, objection, Your Honor. Argumentative. She's already said she doesn't know what happened afterwards. Overruled. I don't know. And that camera ended up, as we now know, in a washing machine, right? You know that, right? Yes. You have this horrible incident that happens upstairs, and the camera's being used for, to photograph Mr. Alexander, right? In the shower, yes. Right. And then the camera's dropped, and then we see the photographs here. You would acknowledge then, ma'am, that under those set of facts, it was you who put that camera in the washing machine? Yes. I because I, didn't, this, I don't remember, but that would be logical. Sure, because Mr. Alexander never left the upstairs bathroom, right? I think that's right. And you would acknowledge, ma'am, that if you did that, it would be an indication from you. At least you're saying that you're in a fog and that you don't remember, but it would be certainly an indication of your mental state back then that you picked up that camera and put it in the washing machine, wouldn't it? Yes. And it would be an indication, ma'am, that you knew what happened. Um, yes, I guess. And it I would don't also... know why it went in the washing machine. And ma'am, we know that these were, this photograph was deleted from the camera, correct? Correct. We know that he's dead after this, right? Um, after this, yes. And we know, as you just told us, that there was nobody else there, that no roommates were there, right? Yes. So if he's dead, no roommates are there, this photograph is snapped, and it's deleted, you're the one that deleted it, aren't you? That would make sense. I don't remember deleting it. I'm not asking you if you remember now. I'm not asking that at all. I'm asking you, given the circumstances that we have here, you're the one that deleted it, right? I would have to say yes. And in fact, deleting something is not a once, given your expertise in cameras and photography, deleting something is not a one-step process, right? That's correct. And you were not familiar with this camera, were you? Um, not prior to June 4th, correct. And so what this required you to do is and I understand that you're going to say that you don't remember. I'm not asking that. But I, wouldn't you acknowledge then that it took some mechanical movement and thinking, and mechanical movement, I mean fingers, and some thought process on your part in order to delete these images, right? 
I would agree with that. And you would agree that the deleting these items from the camera was not in any way necessary for you to do prior to leaving Mr. Alexander's home. I don't understand what you mean. Well, there is nothing, you acknowledge that there is nothing that was pressing about or threatening about the camera that required you to delete these images, right? Um, I don't know what you mean by well, threatening. In order for you to delete them, ma'am, you have to view them, don't you? Yes. And if you view them, then the decision is made. And I know you're going to say I don't remember, but you acknowledge then that a decision is made by you to delete this photograph, right? There must have been, yes. And you would agree then that if the police don't find this photograph, that would be beneficial to you, wouldn't it, in terms of your culpability involving Mr. Alexander's death? I would not agree with that. Okay. Exhibit number one, six, so you think this helps you in your case? I don't agree with that either. 163. There are the, that's the floorboard, would you agree? Yes. And this is the hallway that you claim that you ran down, correct? Yes, that's the one. And that would mean that this up here would be Mr. Alexander, correct? Yes. And that reddish substance would be blood, right? Yes. And again, if we apply the same analysis that we did before, you would acknowledge that the person who deleted this photograph was you. Um, yeah, I guess. There were other things that uh, were done to the scene. Take a look at, at exhibit number 67 followed by exhibit 68. You see 67? Yes. There is blood there, isn't there, ma'am? Yes. That's not your blood, right? I don't think my blood is there. That would be Mr. Alexander's blood, right? Yes. And you would agree that to the right of that, it appears that there is a more, if you will, different pattern. In other words, the pattern on the right is not as dark as the one on the left, right? Um, yes. And ma'am, you would agree that if you, if you had socks on, and which you, we know that you were dead, and you were walking through blood, that this would be the kind of pattern that your socks would leave, right? I don't know. She was wearing socks at that time. Oh, world. I'm not sure. Take a look at Exhibit 130. Do you see that? Yes. Would you agree then that we've seen the photograph, and that's Exhibit Number 162, and if we look at, take, this is Exhibit 162, do you see it? Yes. And you told us that to this end over here is the bathroom. Over here, do you see that? Yes. And if we look at this exhibit, which is 130, you would agree that the bathroom is in this direction, correct? Yes. So that if his foot that we were looking at would be right about where my pen is or right in front of that door, right? Yes. And the door that's behind it is the door that you claim was the door that he was banging his head on back on August uh, 7th of 2000, I'm sorry, in August of 2007, right? Yes. And you would agree, ma'am, that if this is the pattern that we have here and his head is in this direction, as we see it in the picture, then because of the way the blood is flowing down, this is where his head was resting. Right here. I think, I don't know, I guess. 
he would not be the person that would be leaving these marks here to the right, would he? Because he wasn't standing, was he? Objection. She's already said she has no memory. It would call for speculation. The stand. 162. Is he standing there, ma'am? No. Would you acknowledge that based on everything that you know, he's not going to stand after that? Yes, you know. Um, I would I would be very inclined to agree with that. You told us, ma'am, that there was just this shooting when he was coming at you from the bathroom, right? Yes. I'm sorry, from the closet, my mistake. Yes. Okay. And that as he came at you, then you showed us the pose, and then, according to you, the shooting happened, right? Yes. You would agree, ma'am, that the shooting where it occurred is not near what we are, what is pictured in Exhibit 98, correct? Yes. You weren't bleeding, even though you said that you had an injury to your left ring finger, you weren't bleeding that profusely to put all this blood here, right? Um, well, my left ring finger wasn't bleeding at all, so... So the answer is no. That's correct. That is not your blood, right? No, I don't think it is. And again, based on what we know, what you know about this case, and based on the fact that you acknowledge you've done the shooting and acknowledging that that was your foot in this photograph, you would have to agree that a person would have to be standing, or Mr. Alexander would have to be standing, for that blood to be placed there, right? Oh, yes, right. I would think. Yes, I would think that. Ma'am, one of the things that um, happened, or that was found on the body, was a glass. Are you aware of that? Yes. Now, before the murder, there was no glass up in the bathroom, right? There was. It was under the sink. It was under the sink then, right? Yes. So then you would agree that if it was under the sink before the murder, and it was found on top of him after the murder, you would agree that you were the person, you would acknowledge that you were the person that went underneath the sink, got the glass, Correct? I would acknowledge that. And you would acknowledge that you used that glass to try to clean up or throw it on the floor of that bathroom? I don't know what I did with it. If there were lots of water in the bathroom after the killing, for example, if you take a look at exhibit number 118, do you see that? The water marks here? Yes. You would acknowledge that these watermarks in red colored blood, or what appears to be blood, you would acknowledge that you're the person that created those marks, correct? Yes. And you would also acknowledge, ma'am, that these reddish spots here are Mr. Alexander's blood, right? Yes which would indicate that he was in that area bleeding, correct? Yes. And Exhibit 125 shows us the relationship between the closet to the right, correct? Yes. The closet to the left, correct? Yes. And the end of the hallway into the bedroom, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And ma'am, you would agree if we've now seen that there was staining 128 here. Do you see that? And it's concentrated there. Do you see that? Yes. And we've heard that it was nowhere else in the top floor in that bedroom, and we also know that 
You were the only one walking around in 162 wearing socks. You see that? Yes. You would acknowledge, ma'am, that prior to walking out from here and leaving, you would acknowledge that you took those socks off, correct? I don't know. Well, you would acknowledge that there is no blood anywhere else other than in this area here. Do you see that? Yes. So you would acknowledge that if you did have blood on your socks and there was water on the floor and you were walking in it, you would acknowledge that there may be, based on whatever experience you have, there may be other blood throughout wherever it was that you stepped. Objection. calls for speculation. Overall, to me, answer. Um, <coughs> Can you please repeat that? You would acknowledge that you took your socks off before you walked into the bedroom. So I don't that because know. you knew. I'm not saying that you remember it because you knew that they had blood on them and you didn't want to get the rest of the bedroom dirty. She said she doesn't remember even removing her socks. The stained. <coughs> Ma'am. You did leave the house, though, didn't you? Yes. You would acknowledge that you left, right? Yes. And you would acknowledge that there is no record anywhere in Arizona of you ever being in Arizona other than this killing, right? No, I disagree with that. Well, are there receipts, for example, from the places that you filled up with gas? No, at one time there would have been surveillance video, but no. You think there was surveillance video, okay. Um, isn't it true, ma'am, that as you drove out of Arizona, one of the things that you did was that you used the gasoline in those three cans to fill up, to put in your car? Objection. Ms. Kerr your testimony. She said she had two cans. Overruled. Will you repeat that? I'm sorry. You would acknowledge, ma'am, that in Arizona, you filled up the car from the gas, the three gas cans that were in your possession filled with gas. I didn't have three gas cans in my possession. Ma'am, do you remember in Pasadena that there were three separate transactions? Do you remember that? Yes. There was one at the pump. Do you remember that? Yes. There was also one inside the store, if you will. Do you remember that one? Yes. For approximately 10 gallons, you remember that, right? Yes. And then there was another transaction inside the store. You acknowledge that, right? Yeah, that was the two gallons or something. Right, 2.7 right. uh, gallons, right? Yes. There were three transactions in Pasadena, correct? Yes. You acknowledge that there are two gas cans that Mr. Brewer gave you, correct? Yes. And you acknowledge that you bought one gas can from Walmart, right? Yes. I understand that you say that you returned it, but you did have, at least at some point, you acknowledge, have three gas cans, right? Yes, in Salinas I did. Pardon? In Salinas I did. And so the gas that you had in those gas cans, you placed in your car in Arizona, right? No, I didn't need to do that. Well, ma'am, do you remember that you told us on direct examination that the next time that you could remember anything was when you were way out in the middle of the desert. That's correct. And do you remember the testimony of Detective Larry Gladish who indicated that the phone call to Mr. Alexander's telephone was 57 miles north of Kingman? Do you remember that? Um, no, but okay, I will assume he said that. But you do remember that you testified that you were out in the middle of the desert, right? Um, yes, I do. And do you remember that you said that you stopped, right? Mm, yes. And do you remember that you said, well, then, well, I got rid of the gun, right? Yes. So you would acknowledge, ma'am, that even though immediately after this killing happened, you say you went into a fog. Do you remember saying that? Uh, it was in a fog, yes. You were in a fog, right? And one of the things that we know from your own admission was that there was a gun that was involved, right? Yes. That's what you used to shooting, right? 
Yes. And so this gun, you t t tell us, you took it out to the desert, didn't you? Yes. You were the one that removed it from the house, right? Yes. If you weren't, didn't know what was going on, if you were in a fog, ma'am, which means that you don't know the status of your current events or the status of, your, of what's going on, would you agree that there would be no need to take the gun if you were unaware of your status? I would not agree with that. Even though you're in a fog, you, mm, there's a decision, a knowing decision, a voluntary movement that is made to take the gun but on your part, right? I think you're getting fog confused. My memory was in a fog. I don't remember what happened after those things. I'm not asking you if you remember that. Please, that's not what I'm asking. I'm asking whether you acknowledge that you removed the gun from the crime scene. Yes. And you do acknowledge that if you're in a fog, you're in a fog about everything, not just certain specific things, right? I don't know. Well, it's your fog. Is that a question? Yes, it is a question, isn't what is, it? What is it? It's your fog, isn't it? Yes. And with regard to this particular fog that you are in, why would you even think of taking the gun unless you really knew what was going on? I could only speculate because I don't remember. If you were in a fog and you hadn't, didn't know what you were doing, why take the gun, ma'am? Argumentative. Of what? I don't remember taking the gun. I remember throwing the gun. All right. Throwing the gun. If you remember throwing the gun, you remembered where the gun came from, don't you? I recognize it as Travis's gun, yes. I know you say that it's Travis's gun, but shortly before embarking on this trip to Mesa, Arizona, on May 28th of 2008, your grandfather had a 25 caliber gun uh, taken during a burglary, right? Yes. And you knew about that, right? I found out after I got back into town. The answer is yes, you did know, didn't you? Yes, afterward. You did know on May 28th of 2008 that there was a burglary at your grandfather's house, correct? Yes. And you're telling us that on June 4th, or after the murder, you stop at the side of the road, right? Yes. And according to you, you have one of the implements that was used to kill Mr. Alexander, correct? Yes. If you didn't think that you had done anything wrong and you were in this fog that you weren't thinking, why get rid of it? Why get rid of it? I never said I didn't think I'd done any, didn't do anything wrong. Oh, so you acknowledge then that you believe that you did something wrong with regard to Mr. Alexander then, right? I believe that something yes or very no. bad had happened. Yes or no, ma'am. Um, I'm not, how did you word that again? Do you believe that you did something wrong with regard to Mr. Alexander? Yes. And that belief that you had was with you on the side of the road to the point that you got rid of the gun, right? Well, I just threw it, so yeah. You did get rid of the gun, right? Yes. And this knowing that you had done something wrong was preceded by your removing the gun from the crime scene. Right? Yes. So you would agree then that at the crime scene you knew that what you had done was wrong, correct? I would say that would be accurate, but I don't remember. And you were trying to alter the crime scene, weren't you? It appears that way. Well, no. 
based on what you know, there was an altering of the crime scene, wasn't there? Yes. The gun was taken, right? Yes. And we know that you took it, right? Yes. We also know that uh, there was no knife that was found up in the bathroom area, right? Yes. So we know that you took it, right? I don't remember having the knife at all afterward. But there was no knife up there, right? Not, I haven't heard any testimony about that. So I would you would acknowledge, ma'am, that One ninety-three. That Mr. Alexander was stabbed. You would acknowledge that, right? Yes. And you would acknowledge that that stabbing was with the knife, right? Yes. And according to your version of events. You would acknowledge that that stabbing was after the shooting, according to you, right? Yeah, I don't, yes, I don't remember. I'm, I, I'm not asking you if you remember, ma'am. I'm asking if you acknowledge that it would be you that did it, correct? Yes. And you would acknowledge that a lot of the stab wounds, and if you want, we can count them together, including the ones to the head, were to the back of the head and to the back of the torso, correct? Okay. So no, I don't count them. I don't know. I'll just take your word for it. Would you like to take a look at the photograph? <laughs> no. We've... So if he is being stabbed in the back, would you acknowledge at that point that he's no threat to you, right? Objection calls for speculation. Overruled. I don't know. Well, if he's already been shot, according to you, and he's facing away from you, how could he have possibly be any threat to you? I could only guess. I don't know what you're asking me. Well, with regard to the... You were here when the medical examiner testified about the wound to the throat. Do you remember that? Yes. With regard to that wound, ma'am, you would acknowledge that that was, in terms of the stab wounds, you would acknowledge that that was the last wound in the sequence of events. Remember. Yeah. Overall, that was. How can she acknowledge the sequence of the stabs that she doesn't know what they, when, doesn't have any memory of them? That wasn't the question. Overall, do you may answer the question. Are you talking about his testimony? Yes. I disagree with the secrets of events. Would you agree that you're the person who actually slit Mr. Alexander's throat from ear to ear? Yes. Would you also agree that you're the individual that stabbed him in the upper torso. Yes. And you're doing all of this to, in the, according to your version of events, you're doing to this to this individual after you have already shot him, right? Yes. Correct? I believe so. Well, no. Do you remember previously talking to us about how he was coming at you and he was this horrible man with his mean face? Do you remember telling me that? Yes, I didn't say he was horrible. Okay. Thank you for correcting me, but do you remember telling us that he was a mean man? Not today. Well, Not today. previously, previously you did say that he was a mean man, correct? I think I did, yes. And on this particular occasion, you told us that he was cursing at you, right? Yes. And that he threw you down, right? Yes. That he chased you down, right? Yes. And this is the individual that you shot first, right? 
I didn't know if I shot him. It just the gun went off. The gun went off, right? You can at least acknowledge that. Correct? Yes. That's something that you did here, correct? Yes. Ma'am, one of the things that uh, we also know is that there was this rope that was involved earlier in the evening or in the day at 1 o'clock. Do you remember telling us about that, about 1.30? Yes. And it involved this sexual interlude with you and Mr. Alexander, right? Yes. And you told us that it went behind the headboard? Yes. The police did not find a rope there, correct? Um, yes. You took that rope, didn't you? Yes. Why would you take that rope, ma'am, if you were in the fog? I don't know. I don't remember taking it. The rope, according to you, didn't have anything to do with the killing, did it? No, not that I remember. Well, but you acknowledge that there was this rope that was taken, right? Yes. Don't you also acknowledge that you were the one that threw it away? Yes. So then you would acknowledge that you're the person that took it, right? Um, yes. And even though you were in this fog, as you call it, you knew as you're walking in this fog to go looking around for this particular rope, as you say, right? Um, I don't know. Well, you did say that you did take it, right? Yes. And in fact, you remember where you threw it away, right? Um, I think it was in a dumpster. Right, you said you threw it away in a dumpster, right? Yeah. Well, other than that, it would show that you had been there, ma'am. Why take the rope and then get rid of it? I don't know. Maybe for that very reason, I don't know. So you did take the rope then? You yeah. also changed clothing, right? Um, I think I did. I don't... I well, you I... said that you pulled off the side of the road in the desert, right? Yes. And that you said that you went to the trunk of the car, right? Yes. Isn't it true, ma'am, that that's where you claim to have the gas can? That's where they were. Pardon? <laughs> yes, that's where they were. And so the gas cans and the gas were in the back with the water, right? Yes, the case of water and my suitcase. And you found that you had some blood on you, correct? Yes. And back then, that was at the time that there was this stop or security checkpoint before Hoover Dam, right? I pulled over before that checkpoint. Right. You were not so much in a fog that you didn't know that the checkpoint existed, right? I did not know that the checkpoint existed. Well, you just told me that was when the checkpoint point was there. Do you remember telling me that just now? I came to know of its existence when I drove up to it, or when there was a sign or something. But conveniently, or to your advantage, you stopped the car before you got to the checkpoint, right? Uh, a long time before the checkpoint when I called Ryan or texted somebody or Leslie or someone. So, so the answer is yes, correct? Yes. And one of the things that you did was that you got the water from the trunk, right? Um, yes. You cleaned your hands, right? Yes. And you um, changed your socks or put some shoes on, correct? Um, I put socks and shoes on, I think. Right. And you took the clothes, the bloody clothes that you had on, you took those off, right? Um, I think I did. Well, do you remember testifying that you threw them away, along with the gun? I don't recall throwing my clothes out in the desert, but... But you did change in anticipation of the checkpoint, right? No, I didn't know there was a checkpoint until I reached it. Well, you will acknowledge that this changing and washing of hands occurred before you got to the checkpoint, whether you knew or not that the checkpoint was there. That's correct. And you would agree that it was to your advantage to be to have clean hands 
and clothing that is not soiled with blood if you're going to go through a checkpoint, correct? That wasn't my line of thinking, but I would agree with what you said. And then you are making some calls at that time, aren't you? Prior to the checkpoint, yes. You have the, I guess, the um, ability to say, I'm going to look through the car to see if I can find my charger, right? Um, I wasn't looking for my charger, but I looked through the car. You were looking through the car then when you pulled over, right? Yes. And when you pulled over, you found the charger, according to you, underneath the seat, right? Yes. And that allowed you to make some telephone calls, right? Not right away, because there was no reception. Right, but you, were, you made some telephone calls before you reached the Arizona-Nevada border, right? Yes, I turned my phone on, and it just took a while to place a call because the right. call kept dropping. It was before the checkpoint, right? Yes. And while you were driving, were you driving at that time when the telephone was uh, in a position to make calls out? I believe, yes. So when it first came on, so that it had the ability for calls to be made, how far was it to the checkpoint? It felt like an hour. Felt like an hour? Do you I know where Cayman is? No. And when this telephone came on, you started to make telephone calls, right? I attempted to. I was only able to send, I think, text messages. I realize that you're, you're, you're talking about text messages. I'm, telling, I'm talking about telephone calls. You were able to call Ryan Burns, right? Yes. And, you were, and even though you were in this fog that you're telling us about, you were able to call him and make up a lie, right? Um, the fog that I was referring to relates to my memory. Right, it relates to your memory, so you, you could have told Mr. Burns that you were with uh, Mr. Alexander, but you didn't, right? That's right. Instead, you made up a story, didn't you? Yes. So this fog that you're talking about, it wasn't so <laughs> heavy that it prevented you from thinking and making up a lie. Um, yes, that's right. You made up a lie that you uh, had lost your charger, right? Yes. You made up a lie that you had gone to a gas station to get the charger, right? No, that's not what I told him. And so, Mr. Burns is full of crap when he tells us that. No, he just has a poor memory on some things. And you know that based on you, that one limited time that you met with him in West Jordan, Utah, correct? No, I know that from all his inconsistent statements to police. But you only met him one time, right? Um, as, as a romantic interest? Yes. And so you also told them that you got lost, right? Um, I did say that. I did say that. That was also not true, correct? Um, well, technically it was, but not for the reason I was telling him. No, you actually, ma'am, you knew where you were going. You were going over to Mr. Alexander's house. You knew that, right? No, I got lost after leaving his house is what I mean, so technically I did get lost, but that's not why I told Ryan that. Even though there's this technicality, are you telling us that when you told Mr. Burns that you got lost, that you were clear with him that the reason you got lost was that you'd killed Mr. Alexander and you had been driving and you'd been lost that way? Or did you tell him that you got lost a different way? I don't remember what way. I think I made up something stupid and I certainly didn't tell him I got lost about Travis. I told him I got lost right. to deceive him. So even in this fog, you still have the ability to think to protect yourself, right? Um, yes. And the other thing that you did is you attempted to call Matthew McCartney, right? Yes. And you also attempted to call Mr. Brewer, right? Um, I don't remember. I might have. One of the other things that you did, and you know, we were talking about protecting yourself, 
One of the other things that you did is that you plant you immediately, almost immediately when you say you come out of this fog, one of the first things that you do is you try to divert attention away from you so that the police won't think that you had anything to do with this killing, right? Yes. And this fog that you were under that you're telling us about is not so deep that it stops you from fabricating or attempting to fabricate evidence, right? Um, that would be correct. And it's not so deep that, according to you, you can stay on the telephone and know the prompt so that you can get the telephone message just right, according to you, right? Well, just so that I wasn't crying in the message, yes. Right. But you want the message to be just so, so that it sounds natural, right? Yeah, as natural as possible. Right, and you went to great lengths to do that, according to you, right? Yes. And the reason that you went to great lengths to do that was that so that if there was any suspicion, it wouldn't be drawn to you, correct? Um, not immediately. That's That was the point, yes. Right, you wanted to the police to look elsewhere, right? Um, I guess. Well, no, you made the call knowing the reason why you made the call, right? Yes. If you really weren't wanting to fabricate evidence, you would have just left whatever message instead of worrying about crying or whatever it was that you were worried about, right? That's right. And so you called Mr. Alexander and you left him a message, right? Yes. Just play it and hear what you said. This is exhibit number 365. Hey, I know Leslie called you, so I already talked to her, so uh, you can call her back if you want, but it's not necessary. Um, my phone died, so I wasn't getting back to anybody. Um, and what else? Oh, and I drove 100 miles in the wrong direction. Over 100 miles, thank you very much. So yeah, remember New Mexico? <clears throat> it was a lot like that. Only you weren't here to prevent me from going into the three digits. So fun, fun. Tell you all about that later. Um, also, we were talking about <clears throat> when we were talking about your upcoming travels my way. I was looking at the May calendar. Duh. So I'm all confused. Um, but Heather and I are going to see Othello on July 1st, and we would love for you to co accompany us. Um, I don't know when Team Freedom's event is though, but you know it's on the list, so we could do. Um, we could do Shakespeare, Crater Lake, and the coast. So if you, make, if you can make it. If not, we'll just do the coast in uh, Crater Lake. But let me know, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. End of message. To delete this message, press 7 to save it in the archives. Press 9 to hit. Message will be saved for 21. That's you, correct? Correct. And that's you lying on the message, right? Yes. You're telling leaving the message for Mr. Alexander indicating that you got lost, fun, fun, right? Yes. That's not true, right? That's not true. Uh, asking him or talking to him about coming up to visit you up in Wairika and doing some of the things that you mentioned, you know that's not true also, right? No, that was our plan before June 4th. That was the plan before June 4th, but you're talking to him or leaving the message for him indicating that, you know, you're sorry, you couldn't stop by, but you guys can make up for it up in when he comes up to visit you, right? Yes. That's a lie. Yes. And all of these lies, ma'am, are meant for your benefit so that you can escape responsibility. I don't see how that's to my benefit, but I don't know what you mean by benefit, but yeah, so I could escape whatever for the time being. Well, now that you keep saying for the time being, you would have been happy to avoid the consequences for a lifetime, wouldn't have you? Um, I can't say I would be happy, but I you don't know. You would have preferred that though, right? I, I don't know how to answer that. Well, you didn't go to the police with any of your information ever until they contacted you, right? Um, I think I initiated.
initiated the contact. Oh, so you're saying when you called the police, you told them the truth? No, I'm not saying that. You would have been satisfied to avoid any responsibility for the killing of Mr. Alexander, wouldn't you? I don't know if satisfied is the word, probably relieved for the time okay. being. Okay, you would have been relieved to avoid any consequences for the killing of Mr. Alexander, correct? Um, that was, that was my goal right. that day. And that's why you left this message that we heard in exhibit number 365, right? Yes, well but, that's part of the reason. Well, that was the main reason, wasn't it? Yes. I mean, there would be really no other reason to leave a dead man a telephone call, would there? I probably wouldn't have done that, but Leslie said she um, called his phone asking for me because I was missing, and then I thought, well, maybe I should do something about that, and that's why I did it. So ultimately, that was the main reason, yes. So you're looking to Leslie Udy as the reason why you left that telephone call, man? No. I said the other to avoid whatever was all the ultimate well, reason. You, you gave me a reason involving Leslie Udy right now, didn't you? Yes. So I would have thought to leave him a message if she hadn't, if I hadn't talked to her prior to leaving that message. And then she said that um, we've been calling and we called Travis and left a message and that kind of thing. But she told you that, ma'am, not believing that he was still alive, didn't she? Yes. You knew better, though. Um, I think I did. And so you didn't have to follow her advice, right? She didn't give me any advice. Well, you didn't have to follow her words, did you? Um, I didn't have to, but it reminded me of his cell phone, and that's... But it I chose to like do it. I chose to. I'm not, if you're going down the route saying, Leslie made me do that, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying Leslie made you do it. I'm saying you're looking again in a personal relationship in an issue that is absolutely yours to own, you're looking for somebody else saying, Leslie Udy, I talked to her, and as a result of talking to Leslie Udy, that's why I left this. Objection, are you Ma'am, Leslie Udy really didn't have anything to do with that call, right? I made the call, I just got the idea after speaking with her. So she was the reason why you had the idea then? Um, that kind of, I guess. And according to you, if it had not been for Leslie Udy, you wouldn't have thought about it, right? Um, I probably might have thought of it eventually, but maybe not. I don't know. I just know that I thought of it after she mentioned she had left a message on his voicemail. And so because of this outside stimulus, you decided to leave this message, right? It was your decision. It was my decision. Just like visiting Mr. Alexander was your decision, right? Yes. On June 4th of 2008, it was your decision, right? Yes. Um, even though you told us before that he guilted you, that really wasn't the reason that you went. You wanted to go, correct? Part of me did and part of me didn't. Obviously the bigger part of me did because I went and he did guilt me and ultimately still was my decision. And so you made the decision to go though, right? Yes. And then though, after that, you did something else to cover up, didn't you? Yes. Let's take a look at another exhibit. Take a look at exhibit number 534. Did you find it? Yes. It's a text message that you sent, correct? Yes. What's the date on it? The 6th of June. Pardon? June 6, 2008. And it's to Mr. Alexander, correct? Yes. And again, the hours are off by 7, correct? Um, yeah, I didn't look at the hours. So. Well, why don't you just take a look at the hours just so that we can make sure. Okay. They're off by 7, correct? Yes. I look for submitted. Let's take a look at this text message. First of all, 
That's your telephone number there on the left, correct? That was, yes. And the date there is 6 6 of 08, correct? Yes. If we take the seven hours away from the 1658, what we're really talking, on the seven hours from 1658, what we're really talking about is what, 9.58 in the morning, is that correct? Yes. This is while you were still on the road, right, home, correct? Yes, I believe it was. And why don't you read to us what the message is that you left for Mr. Alexander? Hey, I need to know when you're going to deposit that check. And you were referring to the check involving the car, right? Yes. The check that you know was uncashed in his um, desk in his office, right? Um, I don't didn't know where it was, but I figured it wasn't cashed. Now, in fact, there was a conversation that you had with the detective where you talked to him about the uncashed check, correct? Yes. So you knew it was uncashed, correct? By, yeah, when it, by the time it hadn't cleared on the, whenever I talked to him, I knew it was uncashed. But another thing that you knew on this date is that Mr. Alexander was dead, didn't you? Yeah, I think I And did. you did that again so that you could cover up what you had done, right? Yes. Because you did not want to be faced with whatever consequences were involved, right? I was afraid of the consequences. And because you were afraid, that was a good enough excuse for you to send something like that. Restate. The reason that you said, gave to us that you were afraid, in your mind, even though the fog had lifted or there was a fog that was involved, you felt that it was OK to send this message. I didn't feel it was okay. It's not like that. So I guess that would be no. Well, then why are you sending it? Are you sending it so that he can reach him in the grave or what? No. You're sending it so that, as you previously said, involving the telephone calls, so you won't have to face the consequences of what you did, right? Yes. Just like the scene, you're trying to manipulate the evidence, right? Yes. Take a look at another exhibit, exhibit 505. Do you recognize it? Yeah. And that's an email, right? Yeah. Sent by you, right? Yes. Sent to Mr. Alexander, right? To his email. And what date and time was it sent? Saturday, June 7, 2008. What time? I'm sorry, 10-21. Um, I move for the admission of exhibit 505. No objection. 505 is admitted. Let's take a look at it. It's from you, right? Yeah. And you've already told us the date and time. You're sending it to him even though you know he's dead, right? It's a way to stage the scene, right? I think so, yeah. That was my goal, I think. What was, I didn't hear you. That was my goal, right? Yeah. Why don't you start with, hey you, and read to us what it says. Hey you, I haven't heard back from you. A little you. bit louder. The fact that it was sent is enough. Over. Hey you, I haven't heard back from you. I hope you're not still upset that I didn't come to see you. I just didn't have enough time off. It's okay, sweetie. You're going to be here in less than two weeks. We're going to see the sights. You also write, check things off the list and all kinds of fun things, right? Yes. You say Oregon is beautiful this time of year. Yay, be happy, correct? And then you say, anyway, I wanted to let you know that I'm thinking about pushing my visit up to next week, but it depends on my budget, so I'm not sure yet. I know you'll be in Cancun, but I'll probably crash at your house in your cozy bed anyway. 
Eat some of your oatmeal and frozen dinners. You know, the usual joke. I know you said the door is always open, but I wanted to give you a heads up. If for any reason that won't work, let me know and I'll make other arrangements. Your house has always been my second home, although it's a bit more lonely without naps around. You're probably in, Mex in California right now, but wherever you are, but wherever you are, get a hold of me at least before you head to Mexico. Thanks, hon, Jody. You wrote that, right? Yes. That was your way of it. An attempt for you to, again, stage the scene, so to speak, right? Yes. I'm going to play something for you, man. This is exhibit number 248. No jury is going to convict me. Why not? because I'm innocent, and you can mark my words on that one. No jury will convict me. That's you, right? Yes. And that's you saying that, not that you're going to not be convicted because you're going to commit suicide or anything like that, is it? That's correct. You're saying that you're innocent, right? Yes. And you believe that no jury would convict you because you were going to lie your way out of it, right? Objection no. argumentative. The state. Ma'am, you indicated certain things in this court as part of your testimony, didn't you? Yes. You indicated, for example, that Travis Alexander, that you saw him masturbating to a picture or pictures of young boys, correct? I only saw one picture. Right. You saw him do that. That's a lie, isn't it, ma'am? Objection argumentative. I wish it was a lie. It's and ma'am, with regard to this issue of him being hypersexual and him overbearing, being overbearing in that department, that's not true, is it? Um, it's true that he was hypersexual. It's not true I, that I he was overbearing. I didn't ask you if he was hypersexual. I asked you if he was overbearing. You said hypersexual. All right. Let's go with overbearing then. No, I don't think he was overbearing. And in fact, you gave as well as you took, didn't you? Objection. Culture speculation. Mistake. You were in it to the same extent that he was in the activities, right? Objection. Culture speculation. Rephrase. Ma'am, for example, we saw some of the text messages that you sent to him, right? Yes. We heard some of the conversations that you had with him, right? Yes. You indicated, for example, I don't need to go into all of them, that you wanted to sexually blossom. Do you remember that? Yes. And you remember uh, specifically saying that you wanted a facial. Do you remember that? Yes. So you were enjoying the sex, weren't you? Yes. Mostly, yes. And yet, you came in here, and for days upon days, you told us how uncomfortable he they made you feel, right? Only those times. We didn't talk about all the other times. And ma'am, additionally, you talked about how he was physically abusive to you during your testimony, right? Yes. And you said, for example, that uh, in March, when you were going to move to Wairika, that he hit you on the freeway, right? Yes. But we took a look at your journal entry. Do you remember that? Yes. And your journal entry speaks otherwise, doesn't it? Um, it doesn't speak of the incident. No, it spoke of tenderness. Three soft kisses, doesn't it? Yes. And uh, involving the allegation that he kicked you and did something to your finger. Do you remember that? We also took a look at your journal. Yes. And in that journal, that journal indicated that on the day that that was supposed to have happened, nothing noteworthy happened. That's what your journal said, right? Over the span of those four days, yes. Right. And on January 22nd, when you allegedly saw him in this masturbatory conduct, that's also when you wrote in your journal that nothing noteworthy occurred, right? I'm sorry, it was on the 21st, but... Right, the 21st. But your journal entry of the 24th covers 
Because yeah. June 20, I'm sorry, January 21st, doesn't it? Yes. And so, you believe that you're going to be acquitted because you came in and told those stories, don't you? I can't predict the future. And that's not why I told the truth. I still plan to kill myself when I told the truth. And you believe that you, you're saying that at that time, you plan to kill yourself, right? Yes. But that's not what you say in there, do you? No, I couldn't say that. Well, I'm not saying whether or not you could say it. You started your testimony on direct examination by saying, those are the bitterest words I have ever uttered. Do you remember saying that? No, I said they're probably the most bitter, the bitterest words I will ever eat or something. Right, and so you have a very good memory as to what you said about that, right? Yes. No, and you said that the reason that you made that comment that no jury would convict you was because you were going to commit suicide, right? That's great. But in this clip that we saw, you actually say it's because you're innocent, right? Yes, the first degree murder, I'm innocent of that. Yeah, it does say that you did say you were innocent, right? Yes. Even that's a lie, isn't it, ma'am? Um, not how I was meaning it. What's that? Not Objection, I. argumentative. Rephrase. Isn't it inconsistent, your testimony, isn't it inconsistent with what you, this particular exhibit, 248, what you say in exhibit 248? Objection. Oh, that's not accurate in self-defense. Approach. You may continue. Objection overruled. In this uh, exhibit, 248, you heard yourself, right? Yes. You said, I'm innocent. No jury will convict me, right? Yes. Whereas when you started this direct examination, your testimony, you said, the reason I said that no jury would convict me was because I planned to kill myself, right? I said I planned to be dead, yes. Because you were to plan to commit suicide, right? That's correct. Those are two different stories, aren't they? No, on the stand I explained why I didn't say suicide as opposed to the alternative because there was an officer sitting a few feet behind me and if I had said that they would have hauled me off to a padded room, stripped me naked and I would have lived there until whenever. So what you are saying, even today, that when you say that you're innocent, that means to you that there's an officer sitting next to you and you didn't want him to know that you were going to commit suicide, right? That's what you're saying? When I made that statement? Yes, when you said innocent, that's what you equate it with. Um, well, definitely innocent of yes, pre-planning whatever you're trying no, to say. No, I'm not asking about that. I'm asking the about point. the statements. Isn't it true that the statements are different? That's all I'm asking. Yeah, they're different. I don't have anything else. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will see you on Monday, 1015. Please remember the admonition. Are there any questions? Have a nice weekend. Please pass to the jury. The jury is left the courtroom. This area, she may step down.